Hello everyone, this is day three of the flats challenge. Um, today I'm going to just talk about two folds really quick. So we're going to move kind of quickly through um, the first part where I just tell you about my experience yesterday. And uh, we're going to talk about the overnight flat solution that I ended up using. Um, it's been working pretty well, no leaks. I don't have a super heavy wetter, but it's also not fully saturated by any means in the morning, so it could work with a heavy wetter, um, hopefully, because it's about as much diaper as I can stuff into a cover. <sighs> All right, so yesterday uh, we had kind of the same situation with the weather. We are still drying outside. Me get rid of this. Um, I took a picture uh, inside, outside. I took a photo so you can see it was snowing in Utah. It's May. I don't understand it, but I didn't want to dry my diapers in the snow. So we went with the drying rack in the kitchen again. Uh, yesterday I said I didn't use any wet bags. That's not entirely true. I needed to correct. I do use a wet bag in my diaper bag and I hand wash that. I just don't use my big pail liner or hanging wet bags in the baby's room because I don't want to have to wash them. So still chucking the diapers in the Rubbermaid bin in the tub. That's all working great. Um, let's see. Oh, the uh, the one hand washing diaper accessory no one ever told you about. I have a secret right here. It is the three-year-old. <gasps> Turns out three-year-olds are awesome at washing diapers. They love it. She would wash it with the plunger and if I took the plunger and started doing it she wanted to do it more and she literally washed all the diapers yesterday um, which was cool. One other thing I wanted to talk about that I discovered I guess not really discovered because everyone kind of knew it. Um, you know when you hang dry your diapers, especially natural fibers, they come out really stiff and scratchy. I kind of wad them up and shake them to get them to be a little bit softer. I thought, why not use a plant-based fabric softener in my hand washing? So I use the seventh generation. Around here it runs about five bucks at Smith's for a bottle. And after I did all my washing, I threw some more water in the bin and some of the seventh gen and just swished it around and emptied it and they came out so much softer almost as soft as if they had gone through the dryer so there's a little tip if you want to hang dry your flats or prefolds but you don't want them to be stiff and scratchy the plant-based fabric softener works excellent okay yesterday we did the kite fold which comes out looking like this. I love it. It's so, so trim. Here it is in a cover. Oh, it's beautiful. I don't know what fold I'm going to do today. I really kind of want to go back to the kite fold, but I'm going to show it to you. And we will just go into full screen so that we can talk about it. Here we go. Here's your flat big giant flat. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take the corner and fold them both up on a diagonal like this, both corners. Okay, got that. Boom! Both corners folded into the diagonal like a kite. Next step is to take this top corner and Fold it down so that you have a nice flat line on top. Hope this is making sense to you all. There we go. That's folded down. Next is really, really easy. And I was skeptical of this. I had actually never tried the kite fold before. Um, I just kind of thought it looked weird and triangular and not like the shape of a baby, but I should have thought they used to fold their diapers into triangles, so maybe there's something to that. I'm a little bit slow. You're going to take this bottom one and just fold it up again so that you have a flat line down here. This is where you can adjust it. If you need a higher rise, you can fold it higher. Um, 
lower. If you need a shorter rise, you can fold it higher. So here's about where I folded it, but it's again completely customizable. Right there. Um, I folded it up this high because I was putting it on that tiny little dolly. <laughs> um, next you're just going to fold the legs kind of in. You can put the baby on first. Baby. This baby would not, totally not go in this diaper. And then fold the, fold it around the baby's legs is the basic idea. So here's the baby with it folded in between his legs. You can see right there, just like we tried to draw in the other picture. Um, this part goes up. And on my guy, obviously once it's up, I do need to spread the top part out. So this part can be spread out quite a bit. There's quite a bit of extra fabric in there. Look how trim it is between the legs though. Oh, it's just beautiful. Okay, so you put that up and then you can start folding in the sides. Now this one has plenty of fabric on the tabs unlike the diaper bag fold which I showed you yesterday. So I find I don't actually need to fold the um, tabs down. However, if you have a little tiny skinny baby like this doll, they're going to overlap all the way. So there's no way you can snappy this because the snappy would have to be like behind his hips and it just wouldn't work. So if you have that situation where the tabs overlap quite a bit, then you will need to fold them down before you fold them in. And I think I showed that I think I showed that on this photo. Yes, so there we are folding the tabs. Then we have a nice, <laughs> very, very big diaper on a tiny doll. So that is the, the kite fold, and it is awesome. Now I'm going to show you my nighttime solution, if you will. Um, I have used mainly the origami fold the entire time I have done flat diapers. Um, the origami fold does not work on a, uh, oh here, this is the kite fold on an actual baby. He's holding a book because <laughs> that kept him still. It's so beautiful. I love this fold. It's awesome. So we're going to walk through the origami fold and then I will show you um, my nighttime solution at the end because it has the origami fold. This is a hemp baby's flat. I am going to try to show you if I have it. The hemp baby's flat is about one inch. Oh, I don't have it on the computer. Dang it. Um, oh, maybe this is it. Oh, now I've lost all of my other playlist. Okay, this is the hemp baby's flat. That's okay, we're just gonna go through this. This might be a disaster. I'm going to pause. Can I pause my recording? Nope, can't. That's okay. This is the Hemp Babies flat in back. Hemp Babies flats are a little bit bigger than the Oh So Cozy flat here. The main thing is that they are stretchy, so you can actually stretch them, which is the only reason the origami fold works on my little guy's thighs. All right, so next is the hemp baby's flat all by itself. Origami fold starts really simple. You fold it in half. You fold it into quarters. Into quarters. And then this is kind of the tricky part. You are going to pick the corner um, that where all the kind of, where there's no folds. So this is a fold, this is a fold. You're going to pick the corner with no folds, which is this corner. You're going to, if you lift up that corner, you will see that there's only one way that you can pick it up without folding this fabric in the middle. 
um, you're going to pick that up and you're going to make a triangle. This is really hard to explain with still, fo still photos. I will do a video of all the flat folds, just a really condensed video at the end of the challenge. But here you can see I made a completely uneven triangle right there. Um, so if you pull, if you pull the corner the other direction, you will be picking up this fabric and it will make a big mess. So you want to leave this fabric flat, um, just fold it into corners, quarters, and then take the corner down this way. Now, the thing you do after this is you take the whole entire thing and you are going to flip it over, which is probably the hardest part to explain with photos. But here we go. I flipped the whole thing over. Now it is upside down. Next, you are just going to start folding along this edge. You're going to just start rolling it in pretty much. So here it is with one fold and then you just keep going until it's all the way in the middle and the wet zone. I use this flat primarily with my other two kids mainly I think because they're girls so it puts a lot in the wet zone right here which is awesome for girls. Um, and this is kind of the only one I used for several years. Now that I have a boy, I've been experimenting with others, plus I'm making these videos and I want there to be something useful on them. You can put the baby on here just like this if you want. Um, I really like to do the happy anteater. What you do is you take this corner and fold it up here, kind of like a paper airplane. So here is the happy anteater on this side. Happy Anteater on both sides. Boom! There we go. Beautiful. Now you take the baby. And this is a really, really, really tall fold. This fold would never work on a newborn. Um, for this baby, since he's so small, I did fold the front up, but you would have a lot of extra bulk in the front if you use this on a small baby. When they fit perfectly in the rise though, it's awesome. So with him, we just left this folded up because he's a doll and he doesn't care. And we put it on him. There we go. I fold the tabs in again, as you can see, just because I wanted to make sure there's enough um, fabric underneath so the teeth don't grab the baby's skin. But also I want to, um, they will overlap all the way across if you don't. They're really long tabs. So just fold the tabs in. It's pretty easy. And then here it is, the origami fold on a with a huge flat on a tiny doll. It's actually pretty trim. I mean, it's not too bad. I love this fold. This is a great fold. I use this fold at night because I use two flats. So here we have the origami fold with the happy anteater. This is my nighttime diaper, happy anteater ears. And then this is a pad folded, oh so cozy flat, just laid right down the middle um, for the uh, extra protection in the wet zone. I thought I could maybe do without that, but that was uh, um, maybe too optimistic. I never tried, but it's it's the hemp baby's flat is wet on the outside in the morning, so there's no way that I could do without the extra flat in there. So that works really well. This is our overnight solution. It is an extremely large diaper. Here's the Here's the photo of it on my real baby. It was <laughs> somewhat poorly executed. Um, those tabs are not my best folding moment. The nice thing about flats is that as long as they're on, you're pretty much good. The origami fold technically is one that you could probably use with no snappy if you wanted to just like tie the tabs together in a knot right here in the middle. <laughs> you could do that. It would be a lot of bulk in front but in an emergency you could totally go without a snappy with this fold because those tabs are so long. Here's a side view. That's pretty good and uh, here's a view with the cover. The Capri cover, blueberry Capri cover fits awesome over two flats. Uh, my other covers are all rumperoos and there's no way they would go over this monstrosity of a diaper. So the Capri is a great one. Um, and this has kept him completely uh, 
solid nighttime protection every night this week. So this is what we started with and this is what we're going to keep doing. Um, let's see. Awesome. Okay, that is about it for day three. Um, day four, tonight or tomorrow at some point, I'm going to go through my wash routines step by step with you guys. Um, it's pretty much like a washing machine but with a plunger and sometimes a three-year-old so that's super helpful um let me know if you have any questions let me know what you guys are doing overnight if you're doing the flats challenge like i said i've made it work with two receiving blankets before so you don't need to have expensive flats um the nice thing about the hand washing challenge part of this is i've been washing my diapers in the morning actually so i've only used one nighttime diaper this whole challenge um, I thought I might need an extra one, but if I wash in the morning, they're dry by nighttime and I can just use the same diaper every day. If I were to miss a day washing diapers, then I would have no nighttime diapers. So it's good incentive to make sure you get the washing done. All right, I'm signing off for today. Um, had a good time so far. Love the flats challenge. It's actually helped me get caught up on my other laundry because I'm not washing diapers every two days. My washer is always free. So there's that. Um, that's positive. I, I really, I love flats though. I take flats camping. Um, flats are fantastic because they can sit there wet and stinky for three days and they are just so easy to wash that when you put them in the washing machine they get totally clean you don't have leftover stink or weird smells from having diapers cooking in the sun in a wet bag because <laughs> um, I don't like going camping and then buying diapers that I have to then haul out of the campsite it seems like I don't know kind of less earth friendly and if you're camping you're being friends with the earth right um so yeah flats are fantastic i love them um i have yet to wash my flats camping although that is a lifetime dream goal of mine because i would love to just hang up my rope in some trees with my tent right there and have diapers hanging on it if I do that this summer, it will probably be my Facebook cover photo because I wanted to do that for a long time. I'm just always so busy when I'm actually camping that I don't wash diapers and I only go for a few days anyway. Maybe I need to go on a long camping trip. We will video blog from there in the middle of the wilderness with my flats. Not this week, it's snowing. Okay, I will see you guys later and happy flatting!